This is Peter from Anatomy Zone and this is another Neuroanatomy Basics tutorial and in this one we'll be taking a look at glial cells. There are two types of cells in the nervous system. You've got neurons and you've got glial cells. So glial cells are the supportive cells which support neurons in their function of communication within the nervous system. The word glial actually comes from the Greek meaning glue. So when they were first discovered it was thought that the glial cells actually acted as a connective substance within the nervous system, holding it all together. Glial cells are not directly involved in information processing, but they are essential in providing support to the neurons. So there's quite a few different types of glial cells. There are six types, and you've got four in the central nervous system and two in the peripheral nervous system. So in the central nervous system, you've got the astrocyte, You've got the oligodendrocyte, the microglial cell, and you've got the ependymal cell. In the peripheral nervous system, you've got two types of glial cell. You've got the satellite cell, and you've also got the Schwann cell. So let's take a look at these different cells. So first of all, we'll take a look at the astrocyte. So with the astrocyte, immediately striking is the shape of it. It's got this central body, and it's got these projections out from it. So it's kind of got this star shape. So the word astrocyte comes from the Greek, unsurprisingly, like everything in anatomy is Latin or Greek. So astro refers to astron, the Greek word for star. So it's got these extensions from the cell body. And these aren't axons and they're not dendrites, they're simply extensions. So the function of the astrocyte is purely supportive. What the astrocyte does is it helps to maintain chemical concentrations in the extracellular space, it also is involved in removing waste and it has some reparative functions so it can react to tissue damage. And another crucial function of the astrocyte is its contribution to the blood-brain barrier. So the brain is a protected organ. Substances which are circulating within the circulatory system, within the blood, can't just enter the central nervous system at will. In fact, a lot of substances have difficulty passing from the blood into the brain. So this barrier separating the blood from the brain is the blood-brain barrier. So it's not shown on this diagram, but the astrocytes actually have these vascular foot processes which can wrap around capillaries and provide this blood-brain barrier. So I've just drawn on an illustration of a cross-section of a capillary. And if you just imagine the extension of this foot process wrapping around the capillary like this, and you might also have the foot process of another astrocyte wrapping around to form a complete barrier. So similar to the astrocytes are the satellite cells in the peripheral nervous system. So you've got astrocytes in the central nervous system and now we're talking about satellite cells in the peripheral nervous system. And the reason I've grouped these two together is that they have a similar function. So they have a broad supportive role. And satellite cells are found surrounding sensory and autonomic ganglia in the peripheral nervous system. So autonomic refers to the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions of the nervous system. So these cells are thought to regulate the microenvironment of those ganglia in the peripheral nervous system. Now the next set of glial cells we'll take a look at are oligodendrocytes on the right and you've got the Schwann cells on the left. So the oligodendrocytes on the right are found in the central nervous system whereas the Schwann cells which you can see on the left are found in the peripheral nervous system. So the reason I've grouped these two together is because they share the same function of insulating axons. So they provide the myelin sheath around the axons. So I've just outlined the, the cell body of the oligodendrocyte in red. And you can see how it extends from the cell body to actually encapsulate multiple axon segments. So if you contrast this to the Schwann cell on the left, the Schwann cell is a single cell that only encapsulates one single segment. So what is myelin? Well, it's this fatty, lipid-rich substance. And the fat in the myelin is made from the phospholipids of the cell membrane of these two cell types, so the Schwann cells and the oligodendrocytes. And the purpose of myelin is to insulate the axon and prevent the electrical signal, the action potential, from escaping from the neuron. So as well as providing this insulating property, it also increases the speed of electrical impulse 
down the neuron. So I've just drawn a cross section of an axon here and I'm just going to illustrate on the different sort of layers of the Schwann cells. So close to the axon it's layered very tightly together and these tight layers don't contain cytoplasm. It's only this outer layer of the Schwann cell which contains the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So this outer layer of cytoplasm in the Schwann cell is called the neurolemma. Now the last two cells that I want to look at are the microglia and the ependymal cells. So these are both cells of the central nervous system. So on the left hand side of the screen we've got the microglial cell. So the name indicates something about it. Micro meaning small. So it's smaller than the other glial cells. And the function of the microglial cell is really similar to that of a macrophage. So it's to ingest cells and pathogens. So it's thought that the microglial cell may have originated as white blood cells as they're very similar to the macrophages of the immune system. So microglial cells really have a role in immune support. So on the right hand side of the screen we can see the ependymal cells. So these are similar in appearance to epithelial cells and you can see how they've got these this close relationship to one another. So the cells are tightly adherent to each other just like epithelial cells. The function of ependymal cells is to filter blood to make cerebrospinal fluid which is this fluid that flows through the CNS and it lubricates neural structures. It acts as a protective kind of cushion for the neural structures. So cerebrospinal fluid or CSF is found to be produced in the brain ventricles. So ependymal cells are found in a specialized area within the brain ventricles known as the choroid plexus which is where, they're, where these cells are in contact with the blood vessels and they can filter the blood to create this CSF. So you'll notice also that there's these extensions from the ependymal cells and these are known as cilia. So these cilia are structures which can waft the CSF through the brain ventricles and get it moving through the ventricular system. So that's an overview of the different glial cells that can be found in the nervous system. And this table is really just to highlight what we've talked about. So you've got six glial cells, you've got four found in the central nervous system, two found in the peripheral nervous system, and there is some overlap of function. If you have found this video helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you check out some more of our videos. Thank you for watching.